One of the most popular ways to cultivate mushrooms indoors is in a modified plastic bin, often referred to as a monotub in the mushroom community. Professional growers will inoculate their grain spawn using a liquid culture solution or colonized agar. These are more advanced techniques that we're going to talk about in a different video, but since I just grow for fun and as a hobby, I've only ever really worked with spore syringes. Working with a live mycelium is going to be a more foolproof method, but that shouldn't intimidate you from giving this a shot with a spore syringe. As with everything in nature, there's a chance that your spores won't germinate or successfully colonize. The most crucial part is finding a reliable spore vendor as well as working with spawn and substrate that you know is clean and sterilized. So the spawn and the substrate that I'm working with is from Midwest Grow Kits. Um, they do all of the sterilization and the pasteurization for you, so it's really easy and convenient for me and I've had great results with their stuff. The spores that I'm working with are from premiumspores.com, but I've also used sporeworks.com, mushrooms.com, and a few different vendors off of Reddit and Etsy as well if you need any recommendations. For best chances of success, you are going to need your inoculation area to be as sterile as possible. There are a few different ways that you could do this, like you could build a still air box or use the oven door method. I am just using open air in this video, which is not the best way to do it, um, but I... Locked out all my pets and any people 24 hours before I wanted to start doing this. Um, I also closed all the vents, all the windows, and picked an area that has just very little foot traffic in there to begin with. Um, and then before I started, I wiped down all of my working surfaces with 70% isopropyl alcohol about 5 to 10 minutes beforehand. All right, so now that we got all of that out of the way, it's time to get started. So get out your spawn bags and your spore syringe. And you're also going to want a mask, gloves, and plenty of alcohol wipes, as well as a lighter for a little later on. Each spawn bag is sealed with a clear piece of tape a few inches above the white filter patch. So very carefully, you're going to try to separate the tape from the bottom of the bag and make a little cut. It should be pretty easy to come undone after this, but you might also have to make a little cut on the other side as well. So after you get it unrolled, you want to try to get a little bit of space between the grains in the bag so that you don't pierce through the plastic when you inoculate. Next, I'm going to wipe down my gloves with the alcohol wipes before I start handling my spore syringe. Once those are dry, you can grab your spore syringe and shake it around to break up any clumps that may be in there and distribute it throughout the solution. Once that looks good, you're going to open up the needle, set that to the side, and then twist the cap off of the syringe. And then you're going to twist the needle on in its place. Grab another alcohol wipe and wipe down the black injection port on the spawn bag and let it dry for about 15 seconds. So take the plastic covering off of the needle, grab the side of the spawn bag for some stability, and then insert the syringe through the injection port. You're going to inoculate 3-5 to five cc's in total per bag. You want to try to disperse the spores evenly across the top of the bag before moving along to the sides in the center of the grains. When you do this, you're exposing more grains to the spore solution, which will help prevent any excess moisture from pooling at the bottom, which in turn will make colonization a lot easier. kind of hard to film and inoculate simultaneously, so I did inject a little bit more spore solution than I was supposed to, but it's alright, everything is fine. Before you inoculate the second bag, be sure to sterilize the needle with a flame for a few seconds, then wipe down the needle with an alcohol wipe again and follow the same steps as you did before. If you're using the green jars, it's basically the same process as the bags, but you're going to be using 3-4 to four cc's of spore solution instead. The same applies to the jars, just make sure to disperse the spore solution throughout the top of the grains before you move along to the sides. So you're going to need to incubate these in a warm area for about 4-6 to six weeks. Ideal temperatures to prevent any contamination would be between 74 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. I've always stored them in a sealed container, like a, just a random plastic bin, but you could always store them just on a shelf, um, maybe above the fridge or uh, in a closet, just any area that's undisturbed and warm. If you are keeping them in a sealed container, you can maintain the CO2 levels by opening up the lid every week or so. And here's a little look at my grain spawn over a course of five weeks. Here's a classic example of contamination in a spawn bag. Right away, you can notice the bright discoloration as well as the difference in texture. It looks more chalky and almost dusty-like. This is exactly why sterile environment is so important. I was just inoculating these bags in an open-air large room, um, and I forgot to close the vent that day, so oopsies. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up part one. Stay tuned for part two, which is coming soon, and also be sure to like and subscribe as well as comment on some other mushroom teams you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching. Oh, my God. Mushroom.